Welcome back to Hardball. If there was any doubt President Obama intends to tie Mitt Romney to the Republican Congress, it was erased in the president's big economic speech in Ohio. Governor Romney disagrees with my vision. His allies in Congress disagree with my vision. Governor Romney and his allies in Congress, Mr. Romney and his allies in Congress, Mr. Romney and the current Republican Congress, Governor Romney and the Republicans who run Congress, that's what Mr. Romney will say. That's what the Republicans in Congress will say. And at the moment, the Republican Congress is tied to an investigation of Attorney General Eric Holder. And by asserting executive privilege, now President Obama is in the thick of the fight. Is this where the Obama campaign wants to be? Mark Halpern is editor at large for Time magazine and a senior political analyst for MSNBC. Steve Kornacki is senior writer for Salon.com and starting Monday will be a co-host of the new MSNBC three o'clock show, The Cycle. Gentlemen, today in their weekly briefings, both House Minority Leader Pelosi and Speaker Boehner put their spin on the politics of the Holder investigation. Instead of bringing job creating, creating uh, legislation to the floor, the transportation bill, uh, they are holding the attorney general of the United States in contempt of Congress for doing his job. The decision to invoke executive privilege is an admission that the White House officials were involved in decisions that misled the Congress and have covered up the truth. Mark Halpern, do you buy the theory that the president injected himself into this through executive privilege because he wanted to again be at odds, second time in less than a week with the GOP-controlled House? I don't think that was his motivation. I'm really not entirely sure what his motivation is, although I think clearly part of it is, like all presidents, wants to project, protect the prerogatives of the office. But I do think, as your introduction suggested, that they aren't unhappy uh, when the president's seen as being strong and decisive in standing up to a Republican Congress that is, in the eyes of a lot of Americans, part of the problem in not addressing the big issue facing the country, the economy. But what if a vote is taken and some of the D's break ranks? In other words, that it's not a partisan vote. Then, then how is it spun? Well, that will be a big deal. I think uh, for the most part, uh, I think the American people hear things like John Boehner versus Nancy Pelosi like this. Wah, 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 wah. If somebody breaks rank on either side, if Republicans say this isn't what we should be doing, or if Democrats say, you know what, there are real questions here, then I think it becomes a different issue and it moves out of the realm of pure politics and political theater and more into what this is, at least is, is in part, which is a constitutional class, clash between two branches of government over some important uh, principles about investigating and oversight over the executive branch versus the executive branch need to have some privacy and, and, and confidentiality in communication. Steve Kornacki, I would think the downside, politically speaking, for the White House is that it rallies the GOP base. You'd be unsurprised, I think, to hear that I entertained a lot of radio callers today who essentially said, well, what's he got to hide? You know, yeah. how deep is the president involved in this? Yeah, but I, I think the origins of this one are, are really important to kind of keep in mind here. And, and it's sort of the reason why, you know, John Boehner has no choice but to, to sort of go forward with it and why every Republican in Congress probably has no choice but to, to vote to, uh, to hold Holder in contempt. And that is, this is a scandal that really began on the right, to, to the extent it's a scandal at all, which I don't really think it is. It, it began on the right. The right had decided sort of when Obama became president that one of the top targets in the administration, one of the symbols, you know, sort of for their, their resentment of the administration would be Eric Holder. So there's sort of been a target on Eric Holder's back since since the Obama administration began, this has been the thing that's been pushed sort of on the right, talk radio, cable news, all sorts of outlets like that. And now it's finally, because Republicans control the House, they're able to kind of push this thing far enough that it gets a little bit of mainstream exposure. But I think, you know, as Mark said, it's, it's a fight that the Democrats are not necessarily upset about having uh, because, you know, as Nancy Pelosi says in her clip right there, they can just look at the Republicans and say, look, there's no scandal here. Let's talk about jobs. Meanwhile, a guy like Boehner, because his base is pushing this and because Boehner basically is beholden to the base, you know, he's not trusting by the conservative base. He has to constantly be appeasing them as speaker. He has no choice but to sort of, you know, carry the water on this one. Uh, you know, and again, yeah, it, it does excite the Republican base, but the Republican base was always going to be excited about this. Uh, Mark Halpern, does the NRA involvement change the dynamic? The NRA put House members on notice that their votes uh, on the contempt issue were being watched. The NRA's chief lobbyist, as a matter of fact, wrote to leaders of the House Oversight Committee and said this, this is an issue of the utmost seriousness, and the NRA will consider this vote in our future candidate evaluations. Well, that may intimidate or influence some Democratic candidates or office holders who are on the ballot. Look, this is not a central a election just over the center. It's not just an election about energizing the base. For both sides, it's both. 
And I think that while we monitor very closely on issues like this, what Mitt Romney and John Boehner are doing, are they being dragged too far to the right? You can bet that the NRA will use its normal strength and wealth and expertise in communicating with base voters. And I think there are some voters who, I, I think it's right that a lot of Republicans are energized, but I think there are some voters in Ohio and Pennsylvania and Iowa and Wisconsin who may hear from the NRA on this issue in a way that gets them to maybe contribute more, maybe to volunteer more, maybe to vote when they otherwise wouldn't be energized to vote. And so that is that is a factor here. I think that the Republicans can be pleased about, even if they might be losing the battle in the center on this issue to some extent. Steve, what drives the antipathy toward Eric Holder from the right? I mean, if, of all the cabinet members, I've, I've noted this and others have tracked it, it, it's Holder who is most perceived as the surrogate for Obama and who seems to incur the wrath of the harshest of criticism. Yeah, and, and you know, look, I, I I mean, it, you know, it's, it can be uncomfortable to talk about this stuff, but I think you have to consider the possibility that there might be sort of, you know, there might be an aspect of race and, and of culture to that because, you know, you have the Justice Department. Um, well, first of all, you have sort of, you know, the, the caricature of Obama that sort of gets that gets sold on the right a lot is that he's this sort of secret black radical and he's looking to sort of, um, you know, he's looking to sort of maybe take away rights or take away, you know, take away the sort of, you know, money from, uh, you know, from white people and redistribute it and that, that sort of thing. So you, you take, you know, a prominent, you know, black lawyer and you put him in charge of the, of the Obama Justice Department. And I think that's, you know, to, to people who sort of traffic in that sort of thing, you know, it really is kind of a lightning rod. And, and I, I mean, I, I picked up on it, too. I can remember at the end of 2008, early 2009, you remember all those cabinet secretaries, uh, you know, having to go in there for confirmation. You know, there, there was Geithner. He had sort of his, uh, you know, his tax issue. He attracted a lot of heat. And really the only other one that I remember was, you know, Eric Holder. Well, there's no doubt he's incurred the same sort of uh, Internet wrath. You know, those those emails that, that I still get in all capital letters, you must read this, that uh, if they weren't typed, they'd be written with a crayon, and I, I wanted to ask you that question. Anyway, thank you both for, uh, for being here, Mark Halpern and Steve Kornacki.